few years ago, I created a video called How to Use Instagram to Promote Your Business. And this was a very well-received video. So many people in my community reached out to me and told me how helpful that video was for helping them understand Instagram and how to use it, and specifically how to use it to promote their businesses. But so much has changed with Instagram in the last few years. We've gone through several algorithm changes and so many new features being added to Instagram that I think it's about time to create an update to that video. So that is what we're gonna be talking about today. So if you are looking for an updated strategy for using Instagram specifically to grow your brand or business online, stay tuned. Charmed Ones, and welcome back to my channel for another video. And if this is your first time with me, I would like to say welcome. My name is Alexis, but I'm also known as Miss Trenchcoat all across the internet. I'm an online entrepreneur who designs and sells productivity tools, strategies, and skills to help you manifest success with less stress. So if that sounds interesting to you, I'll leave some links down below in the description box where you can check out more of my work online and feel free to download some of my latest free productivity tools over at thecharmshop.com. So today's video is going to be structured a little bit more like a class where I'm gonna be teaching from slides I have my computer right here in front of me, and that's just to make it easier for you to follow along because there is a lot of information in this class that I want to get through in as quick amount of time as I can. Now, like normal, I'm not going to be giving out the slides to this class, but what I am going to do instead is give you an incredibly valuable free download, an Instagram content planner. So this Instagram content planner is going to help you take what you learned today and integrate that into a real 30-day Instagram marketing plan for your brand and business. So grab the link at the top of the description box. It's going to be super valuable for anyone who's interested in this topic of growing your Instagram for business. And honestly, it's something that I would normally give to the students in one of my online business courses, but I decided to give it away as an accompaniment to this video because I really wanted to make sure that each and every one of you who is interested in growing your Instagram for business and learning how to use Instagram more strategically was able to see results very quickly from using these strategies. Oh, and can you guys see my new shirt that I'm wearing today? It says entrepreneurship is the new black. Yes, like the name of that class I put on a few years ago. This is actually from a new line of merch that I created with Teespring. If you're watching this video through YouTube, you should see something below the video that is kind of promoting these new merch designs. I have a couple of different designs. These are mostly going to be like tops and shirts, but there are a few other accessories as well. To make it a little easier for you, I'll also make sure to link the new designs in the description box, just in case you're not seeing that promo below the video. So definitely check them out if you want some inspirational office attire or new office accessories. Oh, and one more thing before we get started, please take a moment right now to go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Give it a like if you like this topic and you're interested in this topic. And make sure you're subscribed to my channel for more awesome productivity planning and online business content because I have lots of great new content coming your way. And since we're talking about Instagram today, why don't you go ahead and show your instructor a little love by following her on Instagram at Miss Trenchcoat. And that way you can let me know how things are going for you as you start executing on these strategies. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into today's content. Okay, so what you're going to learn in today's class, I've structured this information into three parts. Part number one is the mechanics of Instagram, where you're going to be learning how to get your account set up and optimized for business use. In the next section, we're gonna be talking about posting to Instagram. So we're gonna be talking about all of the different posting options. Like I said, there's been a lot of new options added. And we're gonna talk about what they're each used for so that you're not confusing the purpose of each and making the best use of each of the options. And then the third and final section is going to be 10 tips for using Instagram for your business. So this is going to be the strategy to follow for growing your following and selling on Instagram as well. So part number one, the mechanics of Instagram. 
So what is Instagram? For any of you who are completely fresh and new to Instagram, it is a photo and video sharing social media platform. So it's just like all of the other social media platforms out there where you sign up for an account and you're able to connect with other people. Specifically in a business setting, you're gonna be hopefully connecting with people who are going to be your audience, your followers, and your customers. Now Instagram is kind of like the Swiss army knife of platforms right now. There's a lot of things that Instagram is trying to do and it's doing it very well actually so for instance Instagram has killed snapchat it's replaced periscope and it wants to be YouTube and it's even beginning to mimic Pinterest in some ways in preparation for today's video I even noticed a new video call feature so I have a feeling that Instagram is going to be coming for like FaceTime and Skype as well so kind of watch out for that but Instagram gives you the ability to post photos and videos to your feed, live stream to your following, post 24 hour temporary posts to your Instagram story and to post longer form video content to your Instagram TV channel. So like I said, really the Swiss army knife of platforms integrating the best of photography and video into one platform. Now, if you did not know, Instagram was purchased a few years ago by Facebook. And ever since Facebook has gotten their hands into Instagram, there have been a lot of new changes and upgrades. So due to the integration now with Facebook, Instagram can also help you to shop through Instagram. You can run ads, do group chats through DMs, and save inspiration to boards. Facebook has really changed a lot about Instagram. And for business owners who've been using the platform for a while, it can feel like some of these changes are actually making it more difficult for us to remain relevant. But realistically, we have to remember that everything that Facebook is doing is ultimately to increase user engagement and profitability of the platform, which means they wanna make sure that they're doing a good job of keeping users happy with the content that they're getting on the platform. So all this work that we do for our businesses, building followings and creating content, isn't just lost overnight because Instagram goes under or falls to a competitor. So remember that. Now let's talk about how to get set up on Instagram. So obviously, if you wanna create an Instagram account, you can go ahead and do that. It's absolutely free. You sign up via email or Facebook. I don't know if they're gonna change those options in the future, but those are the options I see now. And of course, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is to choose your username, your handle that you're gonna be using on the platform. Now this is very important because if you're a business owner, your username should be in line with your business. Makes sense, right? Your picture should also be your business logo, or if you are like me and you're kind of the face of your brand, it should be a headshot of you that is used in other social media as well. And this is just to develop consistency for your audience. When they see that consistent business name, when they see that consistent business icon, that photo, either your logo or your headshot, they know that the person they're following is truly you, is truly a representative of your brand and business. Now, a very popular question I get for those who actually do run a business and would like to share personal things on Instagram as well is, should you have more than one Instagram account if you wanna use one for business and one for personal? And my answer for that is yes. If you are planning to use Instagram to grow your brand and business, but you also wanna share a lot of your personal life, a lot of things that really aren't relevant to your business, Go ahead and just create a second account. It makes it so much easier for you and really helps to keep your privacy if you're someone who's really gonna be posting a lot of personal things. Now, you might be wondering about me. I only have one account. Well, technically I have two. Um, I have one under my Miss Trench Coat, which is the one I actually use. And I have another one that is the name of my website, Strange and Charmed. But I don't use that Strange and Charmed one. I just kind of have it there as a placeholder so that no one takes that name. But Realistically, I'm not someone who shares a lot of the details of my day to day life or like personal things. Everything from my life that I share is business related for me for the most part. So I haven't felt the need to create a second account, but that could, I guess, change in the future. But for now, you know, my Miss Trench Code account is the one that I've used for years, and that's where I've got my following of like 25,000 subscribers or followers. So that is the main account that I use. Now, the next step once you create your account is to go ahead and create your bio. Instagram gives you an ability to put a bio in there in your profile to let people know who you are, what you're about, 
things like that. Now, it's really important to keep in mind that this bio area, if you are a business, is not about you and telling your life story, but instead it's kind of like a social version of your elevator pitch. This is the area where you get to tell people why they want to follow you and to set the stage for what they can expect from you in terms of content if they do follow you. So I highly recommend that you kind of leave out personal details if they're not things that play to your brand. If they're things that definitely play to your brand, let's say that you are um, a blogger who focuses on motherhood, then absolutely you're going to want to mention that you're a mother and that you have a, maybe a certain amount of children or what their genders are or maybe even share their names if you feel comfortable with that because it's relevant. But you probably wouldn't want to do that if you have, you know, a business that is not motherhood related, right? So you just want to make sure that you keep the details that you share on here light and fun and really geared towards your business and who your audience is as opposed to talking specifically about you. So as you can see, I have shown you here my little bio and I'm gonna go ahead and read it to you so you guys can get an idea of what this is about. So it says productivity and online business tools, strategies, and skills. I'll teach you how to manifest success with less stress. Get my latest free online business toolkit with the link below. So that is an example of what I'm talking about, about letting people know what you're about, what you do, and why they'd want to follow you. So you can, you know, assume that someone following me knows that they're going to learn about productivity and online business, and I'll talk about tools, strategies, and skills that they'll need for those topics. And of course, I've got my little branded byline that says manifest success with less stress because that gives more information to people about what I'm about. I'm about manifestation, about doing things easily and stress-free. So that all rolls into my brand. But you see that there's really nothing about my personal life, anything about things that I personally like or am interested in. It's all about my business and all about what I can do for my audience. So keep that in mind when you're creating your bio. Now, the next thing you're gonna do with your bio is to choose your bio link. So there is one link, and I say that one link that you get for Instagram in quotations because there's some ways around this. But your bio link is the one link that you get to direct people elsewhere outside of Instagram. So you really wanna get strategic about how you're going to use it. A lot of people use that link tree thing where they can create a link tree account that gives them the ability to actually give their users um, a few different options for how they can follow them or where to go after Instagram. Some people like me give a free opt-in, something that is like a gift or something that really introduces their audience to their brand, their business, their products, et cetera. Other people might direct their audience to another platform, to their shop or to their blog if that's where they wanna send people. Really, this is where you need to ask yourself, if I could let new followers see one thing, if I can send them one place outside of Instagram, where would I send them? So really you wanna think about what your priority is for Instagram and for your business. So a little activity that you can do to help you kind of narrow down what you might want to use as the link is to finish this sentence. I'm using Instagram to blank. So fill in the blank. Is it to grow my community? Is it to make sales? Is it to show off my work? Maybe it's to grow my list. The person who clicks that link is what we would consider a warm lead, okay? So they know a little bit about you and they like you enough to go ahead and click and they wanna see more of what you're doing. So where should they be going next if they are warming up to you and you wanna make them a hot lead, a hot follower who might become someone who is a customer in the future? And the final thing that you wanna do in setting up your account is to add integrations. So you can link your Instagram account to your Facebook business page and get a business account or what I'm using right now is currently a creator account. Now these are free integrations that basically give you access to upgraded features. The biggest feature that you get that I would say is the most valuable from doing this is the ability to use the swipe up feature sure to add a link into your Instagram stories if you have a following on Instagram that's like over 10,000. Although there are other ways to get around that actually as well. So it's not 100% necessary. But when you do have that integration with Facebook to your Instagram, you are given access to be able to have increased analytics, run ads, and really to do some of those like shoppable Instagram options that you may have seen on Instagram if you've been poking around.
So that's the final thing that you'll want to do is add any integrations that fit for you and are applicable to the type of business you're running. So next, let's go ahead and talk about posting to Instagram. So like I said, there are a couple of different options you have for posting to Instagram. The first, the classic, is the Instagram feed. And as you can see in this picture, I have just kind of zoomed in to show you the area of your profile that is your Instagram feed. Now here, you're gonna wanna focus on using the one-to-one -one square ratio for your images. Yes, you can use images that have slightly different ratios, but one-to-one -one square ratio is what is optimized for the platform. Now, things to know about the feed is that this is a more permanent place to post content. This is where you're gonna to wanna to tell the story of your brand business and focus heavily on your messaging and your aesthetic. This is really gonna be like the meat of your profile on your Instagram feed. Images and descriptions that you use here and even videos as well should be very polished, high quality, well written because quality is really what matters here because it's a more long form and more permanent option for sharing content with your audience. The next option you get is your Instagram story. And as you can see here, I've zoomed in on my headshot, my little logo for my account. And you can see it's got the red ring around it, which means that there is a Instagram story if people click on that. So that's where you can go and see people's Instagram stories. And here, this is optimized for the nine to 16 ratio, which is you know, basically just the screen size of most smartphone devices. Now, your Instagram story is a temporary posting option. It only lasts 24 hours when you post something into an Instagram story. So here is a really great place where you can share previews of content, products. You can share content from other platforms. If you have that swipe up feature, you can literally say, hey, I posted a new video, or hey, I have a new you know, item in my shop. Swipe up to go check it out, right? So if you have that swipe up feature, that's very helpful. Um, but it doesn't have to be as polished because this is a more temporary place to post. Things can be a little bit more off the cuff. You could be using, you know, more graphic sort of pictures than photography here because it is less permanent. But of course, quality does always count. So if you can be creating the best quality graphics here and photography here and video as well, it's, also, it's always going to help bolster your brand. Now, I personally actually have templates that I use for different content that I share on my story. This makes it easier for me to share and gets my audience familiar with the templates so that they kind of understand and pay attention when they see something that they usually like. So here's a few examples of some templates that I have ready to go. I've got a template that I have that is where I like to share my videos by putting like my video image in the computer screen. Um, I also have some just like desk shots where I can, you know, create lists or give people information. I will often create templates that promote things like in this example, the online business toolkit, free class and a PDF guide. It's a promotion thing that would have a swipe up in there. And then the final image is a screen of my iPhone where again, I could replace that screen and put something in there, maybe a call to action, content, another image, something that gets people a little bit more engaged. So I found that having sort of template images or graphics goes a long way for helping me to really be able to keep my story filled and promote other aspects of my brand and business online through Instagram. Now the next option you have with your Instagram story is Instagram story highlights. And I've kind of zeroed in here on my iPhone screen where you can see that I've got little circles of topics that say high vibe, office, inspo. I think the next one is maybe freebies. Um, and you can see like a little graphic. And, and if you click on one of those, what it does is it brings you to a selected feed of different Instagram stories I've posted in a highlight. Now, I think when it comes to your Instagram highlights, it's really important to think strategically about which highlight categories you want your audience to see and which Instagram story posts that you save to these categories because it's easy for these highlights to get very long and really just like muddled up with content. 
So just save a handful of posts into each category so that people don't get annoyed having to watch or click through lots of different content. In addition, I recommend choosing your highlight cover image wisely as well. I know a lot of people are doing these graphic icon covers for their highlights, but honestly, because Instagram is an image-based platform, I think it's important to use a very pretty, like eye-catching image for these. And I think that that probably does better than a generic icon. Also keep in mind that when it comes to your highlight cover images, you aren't limited to using images that are in that highlight. You can actually upload other covers. So I recommend doing that. Use the nicest pick that you have that illustrates the category for your cover so that people want to click on it, want to learn more, and then get to see a very streamlined collection of highlights that you've chosen to really indoctrinate them into that category that probably speaks to some area of your business. Like I said, products, content, things like that. For my categories, I like to keep collections for products and different areas that speak to my business, like office supplies or free downloads that I have or you know productivity and planning topics. So think about the topics that you would want to show people on your highlights. And again, just streamline what those images are going to be that you're going to have there. And hopefully you'll be able to better direct your audience through your content and help them to quickly and easily identify other content or products or even services that you offer that may help them develop a stronger bond with your business specifically. Now, the next posting option is Instagram Live. And again, this is another nine by 16 ratio, just the size of a smartphone screen. Now, in order to access your lives, you will also see them in that same circle that your story is in. So actually, if someone has a live and a story, you click their, their icon and you'll actually get an option for which one you wanna view. Now the Instagram lives are an option that you will actually find when you go to take an image for your Instagram story or post to your Instagram story. It's just one of the scroll wheel options at the bottom that says live. Now, again, the lives are a temporary option for posting to your account. And it's really a great way to talk directly to your audience. This is good for creating a live event feeling for a promotion or interacting one-on-one -on -one with your customers, getting feedback, sharing more of the behind the scenes of your life, doing, you know, ask me anything sort of question and answer sessions. There's a lot of different ways that you can use the live feature, but remember, it's temporary. It only lasts 24 hours. It's really more for spur of the moment type of, you know, interactions and authentic interactions with your audience or customers. Now for higher turnout rates though, I would definitely suggest that you schedule and announce any lives that you're doing so that your following gets a chance to like know that you're gonna go live instead of just randomly going live whenever. Yes, you have the ability to do that and Instagram will share with your followers that you have gone live, but I think it's always better to be able to schedule something like this, let people know or create like an ongoing schedule like, hey guys, I always go live for a Q&A session about my products on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern, something like that, right? If you keep it consistent or you at least announce when you're going to do it, it gives you a better chance that people are gonna show up live. And when they show up live, they have the ability to interact with you. And again, that's just more authentic interaction and bonding between you and your brand and your audience. And the final Instagram posting option is IGTV. And again, this is optimized for the nine by 16 ratio or 16 by nine ratio, which is the standard sort of high def video dimension. So as you can see in my image, your Instagram TV feed is also down where your highlights are and it actually is marked IGTV. Now these videos are really supposed to be more permanent high quality video content that you're gonna put here. Unlike your Instagram story, these do not expire. You choose when you delete them. And so this is really an opportunity for you to create content that is a little bit more high quality. And another benefit of using the Instagram TV feature is that you have the ability, no matter who you are, to add a link into the description. So this is a great option for sharing videos that might be content previews, you know, creating additional content for your Instagram, promoting pro promoting products, and even your opt-ins. You can do a lot of different things here, create sort of almost like 
content commercials, I would say, for your brand and your product services, etc. Now, I do want to stress here that it is very important, though, that this content has some sort of value. You don't want to just make everything a commercial, but it does give you the opportunity to showcase your brand and your business products, etc at a higher quality level and it's more permanent, right? You're gonna to wanna to invest time and energy into creating the best videos possible because it's gonna be able to sit there and I believe you're actually able to post videos that are up to an hour long using the IGTV function now. I think you only get maybe like 15 minutes if you are posting directly from your phone, but Instagram now has like a web-based video uploader so you could like upload a full hour long video to Instagram from your computer. So definitely put time and effort into thinking about what sort of videos you might wanna share here, what sort of links or things you might want to add into your description so that you're sending your audience to places specifically that work for your brand and your goals. Now we get into the third and final section of this class, the 10 tips for using Instagram for your business. This is going to be heavy Instagram strategy here. So tip number one is to take photos and videos with the best camera that you have access to. So use a DSLR camera if you can. So that is what I use to take my pictures for Instagram most of the time and videos as well. Even those template images that you saw for Instagram were created with a DSLR camera because quality does matter. It goes a long way for speaking to your brand and your brand's quality as well. I'd also like to recommend here that you edit your photos before you post them, right? So even if you're taking photos on your smartphone device, there are lots of different editing apps that you could be using on your smartphone, on your computer, et cetera, to make the photo look a little bit better, a little bit more high quality, even if it wasn't taken with a DSLR. Some examples of apps that I use and love on a regular basis are Afterlight, Facetune, Pick frame over Union and Rona Design. So definitely check those out. They are iPhone apps. I'm not sure if they're available on Android or Google or anything like that, but those are the ones that I use and rely on. Tip number two is to use great lighting. Now, if you are new to photography and do not know, natural lighting is the best possible lighting that you can use. It gives your pictures the best possible quality. Now, if you are in a situation where you do not have a lot of great natural light, it is fine to use studio lighting if you have sort of studio lamps or things that you can set up to take your pictures. Any way that you can add light to a photo is great. Now, another option you have is to use bright daylight bulbs in lamps. Or for example, here in my office, the lighting that you're seeing is partly coming in through a double window that I have in my office, but also I have bright white daylight bulbs in my ceiling fixtures. And that helps to create a more even toned look for my pictures and my videos. So consider something like that. You can always put these sorts of light bulbs into a lamp and kind of create your own at-home studio lighting if you don't have that option. And finally, use things like reflectors to enhance light. You can use things like whiteboards or any other sort of bounce boards. There's plenty of different photography options and I'll maybe link some down below for you guys to check out. Just some really great tools that you can add to your photography you know, bundle for Instagram. But these are gonna also go a long way to help you create you know, a more light-filled image so those images are higher quality and go a longer way to speaking to and you know, catching the eye of your audience. Tip number three is to stick to your brand color scheme in your Instagram photos. So what I mean here is to use the colors and patterns and even sorts of filters that are all the same that speak to your specific branding. This will help to visually distinguish your brand from others, even those in your niche. So if you can see here in this picture, I'm showing you just like a little snippet of some pictures that are on my Instagram feed. And what you're gonna see here is a lot of black and white, a lot of high contrast and like turquoise, right? Because that turquoise color is my signature color. So black, white, turquoise, those are my branding colors. And you will see that I use a lot of high contrast on my pictures. That's kind of what I mean by filters. You just wanna make sure that your 
images kind of all look the same, that people know that all of these photos belong to your brand. And you can do that by sticking within your brand color scheme and sticking to sort of treatment of images that are in post-production in your editing process that are all the same. Tip number four is to use consistent backgrounds for any photos that might be sort of like styled desk shots or things like that. You can use a whiteboard or a photography backdrop for something like this. It's very common for people to use those. Like foam board is a really good way to kind of get that whiteboard effect. You could also use different sorts of cardboards, wrapping papers, you know, sheets, blankets, marble as you can see in my image here, and even sorts of tile sorts of patterns and things like that as a background. So the thing here is that you just want to kind of choose what your backgrounds are going to be and be consistent with it and make sure that the backgrounds that you use speak to your brand. Obviously, if you're someone whose brand is a little bit more like country or rustic, you might want to use like wood or like wood paneling as a background for your images because it might speak more to that sort of farmhouse, country, rustic feel. So just do what feels right for your brand. Just make sure you keep things consistent. A lot of my backgrounds end up being like black or white or like marble like this. So this is just an example of just like a generic image background that I would have. Tip number five is to define your subject matter. So ask yourself, what subjects speak to your brand and business for things that you could be taking pictures of and sharing on your Instagram feed? As you can see here on this collection of images that I've put together from my feed, there's a lot of office and desk and coffee sort of inspiration here. Some of my products, tech gadgets, just things things that sort of evoke the idea of working for yourself, working from home, being an entrepreneur, etc. And of course, I threw a picture of myself in there, a selfie, because even though I do focus on my content topics a lot, I do like to make sure that people remember what I look like and share selfies of myself as well. But my brand, because it's, you know, because I'm not a model and I'm not someone who's very like focused on me, um, I do tend to share more often than not photos that are of situations that anyone could literally see themselves walking into, like a desk, a computer, etc. Really help people to connect with the image and feel like this is their life. This is the life they could have if they work with Alexis and her brand and her products, etc. Another point I want to make on the consistent subject matter is also the use of sort of consistent props. So if you can see in some of these images, there's a lot of things in these pictures that are the same, right? So my glasses, planner, um, even some like desk accessories that you might see. When you keep all of these sorts of things consistent, people are going to begin to recognize your pictures in the feed without even having to see your name. Now, I personally like to keep all of these items very realistic. I don't ever just throw things into my pictures just for people to see. I really make sure that all of the things that I'm taking pictures of are really things from my work to give a very authentic feel to my photography. Tip number six is to stick to the big five content kings when it comes to the content and the descriptions you're writing for your feed. I know a lot of people have questions about what they should be writing as the descriptions of their pictures, and even to some extent the subject matter as well for the photos that they should be sharing on their feed. And they all come down to these five content categories. Number one is to educate. So teach your audience something that has to do with your brand and business through your picture and through your description. Number two is entertain. So show them something funny or relatable, something that's going to help build like a connection of trust between you and your audience. The next is inspire. So give them a message that is going to uplift them and really inspire them into action or to really just help lift up their vibe, their, their energy, their mood. Because if you're someone who can affect their mood, you're absolutely someone that they're connecting with. Number four is inform. So show them something like the behind the scenes of what goes into your brand and business. So often we have these perfectly curated feeds and people are dying to know what's behind those. So feel free to inform your audience of what goes into the work that you do and what goes into your brand or business. And again, that just develops more trust with your audience and you. And finally, be sure to interact. So engage with your audience, ask them questions, do community building, or even sell to them through your pictures and descriptions. Remember, 
your Instagram account is not just about you talking to them, but really trying to build a conversation with your community. So posts that help your audience to interact with you or to interact with your business are very important. Tip number seven is to use relevant hashtags. So if you didn't know, hashtags are like the search engine of Instagram. So what you're gonna to wanna to do here is make sure you have a collection of relevant hashtags at the bottom of the description for your post. Now, the way you can do this is actually go ahead to your Discover tab of your Instagram and search for tags and what might be relevant keywords that you might use to describe a picture. It's important here that you are choosing relevant tags that really do speak to what people are seeing or getting from the content that you're sharing. Keep in mind, there are like millions of different hashtags out there, so it's really important that you stick to ones that are as relevant as possible and avoid a lot of the big spammy tags. I personally find that using just a handful of very relevant targeted tags is a better way to get new followers and new likes than it is to really load your description box up with like every popular tag there is. And the reason for this is that a lot of the more popular tags end up getting marked as spam by Instagram and their algorithm. And if you happen to have a spam tag on your photo, it's actually gonna end up blocking that photo from showing up in any search for any hashtags. So keep that in mind, it's better to check out the hashtag, make sure it's legit, make sure it's not spam, and use them strategically because if you don't, you could run the risk of actually getting your photos seen by no one because you're accidentally using something spammy. And here in the photo, I just want to point out, you can see that I've shown you guys, you know, some examples of some hashtags that I might use on my photos. And again, they will change from image to image. But as you can see, if you read through this, a lot of it is planner, productivity, personal development, and like self-management related, all having to do with my brand, all having to do with the topic that was shared in that description. Now, tip number eight is to network and interact. Remember, Instagram is a social platform, so don't just post photos and wait for likes. You need to go out and find followers and interact with them as well. And don't just follow people to have them follow, follow you back and then drop them as soon as they follow you back. Be genuine about who you're following, who you're networking with, who you're interacting with. As you can see in this picture that I've shared with you, you know, I make sure that when people leave me thoughtful comments to leave them a response. And that's really how you're going to grow trust and authenticity for your brand and business with your followers and convert followers into potential customers. Tip number nine is to have a plan. You need a plan for your social media feed so that you remain consistent growing and interacting with the community you're building. And this is exactly why I've given you that free Instagram content planner so that you can sit down and think about all this information that's been shared in today's class and really put these strategies into action by mapping out the content that you're gonna post on a monthly basis. Now, when it comes to mapping out and planning your content, there are some additional things you can do to help develop routine and consistency with your audience. For example, there are some shops that will share their new releases on specific days of the week. So that helps to develop consistency with their audience because their audience always knows that, for example, maybe on Wednesday, the new releases are out. So they begin to anticipate and get excited for Wednesday and know on Wednesday, I can see what's new in my favorite shop. Also think about running promotions in line with your Instagram. Even if you're running promotions outside of Instagram, on your shop, through email, on another platform, think about integrating Instagram into these promotion plans. If you have a coupon code, share it on Instagram as well, perhaps in your Instagram story as opposed to your feed because it might be a temporary promotion, but just make sure you're putting thought into using Instagram in line with the rest of your business efforts so that you have that following that you have built on Instagram being included in whatever offers and promotions and things that you might be doing elsewhere. And finally, tip number 10 is to follow the 80-20 rule for selling. This means that 80% of your posts should be sharing relevant content and 20% of your posts can be promoting your products. So if you think about this, out of five posts, 
four can be content, and then one has a sales call to action, for example. Now, the reason we follow the 80-20 rule is because you do not want to be constantly bombarding your audience with calls to action or sales or promotions or showing them, oh, buy this, buy that, do this, do that. You want to give them incentive for sticking around and being part of your community. And those things need to be really high quality, valuable content that, again, speak to the subject matter that you are posting in your account and those big five content kings that we talked about earlier. Now, I have a few other tips that I don't want you to forget about when it comes to Instagram. Number one, that it's never been about the numbers on Instagram. It's always been about community. As with most platforms, your Instagram follower account is really only a vanity thing. As a business owner, you don't make more money because you have a larger following. And thanks to algorithm changes, your whole following is likely not seeing your posts anyway. Only the people who are constantly engaging with you are the ones who are really gonna see everything that you post. So now it's more important than ever to treat Instagram as a place where you share more intimately and authentically with your core community to give them incentive to be checking up on you regularly so that they're the ones who see your posts. Number two is that the point of Instagram is still to socialize. At its core, Instagram is a social media platform. And even though you and I might use it for business, the point is to actually socialize with our followers. This means actively engaging with them in our content and actively responding to their questions and comments. We should also be actively engaging with the content of those that we follow as well. The platform isn't just about you and you definitely have people that you are connected to, that you're following, and you should absolutely pay them the favor of making sure you engage and interact with their content as well. Number three is a big one, you guys, and that is that paying for followers and likes is still against the terms of service. And if you're thinking, wait, you can pay for followers and likes on Instagram, you can, but like I said, it's against the rules. So it's clear that for some misguided people, Instagram followers and the like numbers are a reflection of the value of their brand. So they purchase followers and likes in order to make themselves look better. But this behavior is against the terms of service for Instagram and can get you banned. It's also fraudulent for brands or influencers to do this in hopes of gaining more opportunities or even free PR packages because you are defrauding the other company. Now, you might think there's no way that someone can tell that you're doing this, but alas, there is. Smart businesses know that a quick scroll through your user follower feed can quickly show a prevalence of unusual accounts and spammy accounts. Usually, they'll have a lot of foreign sorts of accounts that don't make sense for the brand and just accounts that just look like they're spammy, right? Like free followers, follow for follow, things like that that just look wrong. Also, sites like Social Blade actually track and publicly make available stats for Instagram users and publish that data on their site. So, so I can easily go back through your data and see if you've had large spikes of followers in a short period of time and then a significant loss of followers as well. This is always a dead giveaway that an account has purchased followers because Instagram is constantly purging spam accounts. So you buy some and you lose some when they aren't true followers. And if you are a business owner who wants to work with other influencers online, I want you to remember this because you should check Social Blade historical data for anyone you're sending free samples to or partnering with for a promotion because more people than you think actually do this. And like I said, they can pay for likes too. It's not uncommon for a fraudulent brand to pay for likes to a sponsored post to make it look like they held up their end of the deal. But trust me, you won't be seeing a return on your investment from working with them. So this is very important for those of you who want to start business accounts or want to use Instagram to work with other influencers as well. Keep this in mind. Number four is that Instagram is still disposable content driven. Because it's a social media platform, the lifespan of a post at its max is maybe one day, meaning that you can expect activity to sharply decrease on a post after that amount of time. The Instagram algorithm favors more frequent posting. So I see many branded accounts posting like two or more times a day, which is a lot of content when you think about it. Now, I want you to know that just post as often as you can on a consistent basis, aim for at least once a day, but if you can only do once a week, that's better that you do it consistently than to be inconsistent with your posting. 
because all of this data goes into the algorithm and really goes a long way for deciding how your audience is going to see your content. And number five, don't forget that Instagram should not be your only platform. Although you can do a lot of things on Instagram, it shouldn't be the only place that you focus on growing a following. You need to have your own platform like a self-hosted website or an email list because you don't control the platform and it could go away at any time or you could lose your account. It does happen more often than you'd think and unless you are a very famous person, Instagram isn't going to help you get your account back. So it's always a good idea to make sure you have following elsewhere, not just on a social media platform like Instagram. Also, I wanna remind you to prioritize your account security with two-factor authentication for good measure. You would be surprised at the amount of accounts that are hijacked because of poor passwords and poor security practices. So don't forget to do that because you do not wanna lose all your hard work for something silly like a hijacker. Now that you have all this information, I want you to go forth and kill it on Instagram because I know that you now are well prepared with strategy and a content planner to make sure that you are putting your brand's best foot forward on the platform. Now, if this class just blew your mind and you're interested in seriously up-leveling your digital marketing for Instagram and beyond, I have two perfect resources for you to consider right now. If you need help with online marketing strategy to uplevel your business, or if you need help with creating great images for your Instagram or other social platforms. To uplevel your business marketing, I would highly recommend my program, Empire Building. This is a self-paced online business and marketing course delivered through six video modules with digital workbooks and activities. It's everything you need to create your brand, grow your following, and earn an income online for those who are getting started. And if you want to uplevel your photography, the Digital Styling Lightroom, also known as Charmed DSLR for short, is the choice for you. This is a digital styled stock photography class delivered through six video modules, digital worksheets, and guided tutorials. Everything you need to create perfectly branded photography for your own online platforms to attract and grow your ideal audience. So if you want to learn more, I'm going to leave some links in the description box where you can check out more about Empire Building and the Digital Styling Lightroom. Today's class isn't a sales pitch. I just wanted to make sure that anyone who does want more information and wants to work with me knows the options that are available to them. And so moving forward from today's class, what are the next steps? I mean, you've just learned a lot about using Instagram for your business, so please give this video a like if you forgot to do that already and leave me a comment and let me know what you learned from the class. If you have any questions on anything specifically, let me know. You can leave me a comment down below or shoot me a DM on Instagram at Miss Trenchcoat. Thank you guys so much for watching today's class. Make sure you're subscribed for more awesome content by me and until next time, bye bye